All right. So welcome guys. Welcome to the teens financial literacy seminar. I am Nimish Pathak. My son uh, could not join, but he did help me prepare this uh, presentation. And we also reviewed together. And so uh, the goal is to basically educate our kids now, uh, assuming they are in the teens age, they are teenagers. And as I said, um, we both worked on this. Mostly I worked on it and he helped me. So he's my assistant, but he couldn't join the call right now. So let's get started. So first, let's see the big picture. All right, so big financial picture. So this is your age, your time, your lifespan from zero to 100 years, right? So 100 is max. This many years from what, six years, seven years, you're gonna start your school till 18. Then comes college, four years college. Then starts the career portion and then family. Right, and then a pre-retirement, 55 to 65, I'm saying you may be thinking of retiring early and then retirement years, which is where very likely you're not gonna work or you don't want to work, right? Now, this is a generic uh, uh, grouping of the phases of life. You know, each person has their own formula, but this is very generic. And so I'm gonna discuss based on the generic uh, picture here. All right. So if you see this timeline, we are going to work from right after the college from 22 to maybe 62 core working hours, almost 30, 40 years of our career life, where we're going to start as a single guy, start dating, get married, kids, family, this, that, buy a house, second house, third house. That whole thing's going to happen for 40 years in this white box. And then we're gonna retire, our kids are out of house and uh, we're gonna uh, live for 30, 40, however many years, but that's the retirement years block. So in the core working years, we, we work, we earn, we buy needs and wants. We gotta have fun, right? So we're gonna have fun and we will also have save for the retirement because we want to have fun in retirement also. So we'll buy needs and wants from the money we saved for the retirement. And we'll also have fun. So in other words, we need to manage money while we are working in the career years with the family, with the kids, and then also during retirement years. So the management of money is very important for almost 60 to 80 years, you know? So till 22, your parents are taking care of you, very likely. But after that, another 50, 60, 70 years, you are going to manage your life, your expenses, your fund, right? So <clears throat> what is the problem? What are we trying to tackle here, right? So if you ask people, grown-ups around you, and I'm when I when I'm talking, I'm addressing the teenagers, right? And the new guys, new immigrants to US. I the problem statement is if you ask the grown-ups right now here, they will all tell you, I wish someone told me finance about finance management, money management when I was young. When why are they saying that? Because they have some problems, or they may be having some problems, or they may be fearful of some problems. That could be they're not making enough money, are not able to save. They're struggling with affordability, you know, lack of budgeting. They may not be able to support their kids' education. Uh, they have not saved enough for retirement. And that's all because of lack of financial knowledge. They're confused. They don't know what to prioritize and so on. And because of that, they don't have enough retirement savings. For the so the remaining 30, 40 years in retirement could be impacted, right? And that could be they maybe struggle with the living expenses. Um, they may have to work in the old age, 
you have seen those guys working in Walmart, working as greeters, or old folks working the greeters because they don't have enough money, right? So uh, it's kind of forced upon them because they didn't save enough during the core working years, right? They cannot afford the health expenses. And then they are not enjoying the retirement years. They're tired, they get tired, they have health issues and they have to work, right? So the problem is, could be in the current core years, working years where you're not able to manage the money properly. And then in the retirement years where you don't have money, so you have to work or you have to struggle, right? So the retirement years really depend on your core working years. And that's why your core working years are very important. What are those core working years? Anywhere right after you graduate from 22 to 62, for example, 40 years. These are very important, not only to enjoy during that time, but also for retirement. So what we are trying to do in this session is tell you all these secrets, possibilities, and so many Americans are going through this right now Roughly 63% people are going paycheck to paycheck. They're not even saving. 63% of Americans. And their retirement will be horrible. So we are trying to teach you in your teenage years. We are trying to tell you secrets, all the secrets, so that you are strong and powerful. You know the math, you know the requirement, you know the finance management portion. And we're going to teach you all those what you need to remember. Right? So this is where this session comes in. So you need to raise your right hand and definitely pat on your back for your this decision to join this call. This is fantastic decision of yours as well as your parents. All right, so let's look at the high level objectives of this seminar. What are we trying to do here? We're trying to learn how to manage your money wisely. We're trying to, and that is so that we can make sound financial decisions. And then once you do all that, you're going to have financial stability, right? And also emergencies. You know, your car broke, you lost a job, or medical emergencies. Suddenly you need uh, a big amount of money. So how are you going to handle those ups and downs in life in those 50, 60 years? We're going to teach you all that, how to manage that. And that will happen. No one can avoid ups and downs. Downs cannot be avoided. It will happen. All right. So as uh, you know, we were discussing, uh, one family mentioned, majority of folks going through the financial hardships today wished they had learned about financial management when they were young. And that's why we are trying to give here that advantage. So let's stay ahead of the game. All right. So let's go through the lessons we have. So what I've done is, and I'm not going to go through all the, I'm not going to go through the list here, but at a high level, we have spending money lessons. That is, that will teach you how to spend money. Then the growing money lessons, and then debt management and taxes. And finally, we will, you know, gather all this knowledge and come up with the consolidated guidance. What exactly you need to remember. But before we go there, you need to understand the each uh, portion of this uh, literacy plan, right? So we're going to go through all these lessons. Any questions so far? You can unmute and ask me. Okay. Silence means no questions. Uh, I hope you guys are there, by the way. Let me see. 32 guys. Okay. All right. So let's continue. Right, so let's start with needs and wants. So these are basic. This may be boring to someone, but nothing wrong in refreshing, right? So what are needs? Needs are things that you can't get by without, such as food, you know, apartment, house, some place to live. And then wants are things that are nice to have, but not absolutely necessary. It's not required, like entertainment, luxury cruise, so on. So let's go through it. So food, shelter, uh, water, air, basic clothing, safety, freedom. These are all needs. And then wants are movies, shows, entertainment, 
restaurant meals, golfing, streaming services, Roku, Netflix. That's a plus. Your parents are getting you Disney and all that. That's a want. Apple Watch and so on. So the, the, the big guidance is make sure you fulfill the left side first because this is for, to survive and to live a normal life. Then save some money and then buy things that are affordable. You have enough money. You have enough budget, right? You may not be able to get everything, but maybe you can watch one movie a month, for example, or you can have one restaurant meal one weekend in a month or two, twice in a month, depends on how much money you are making and saving, right? So needs and wants are very important. How will that fit here? So this fits in a budgeting. So we have a budgeting rule or a very popular method called 50, 30, 20. So this is basically telling you, giving you a formula on how to live month to month. So imagine you are 22 years old, you got a job after college, and you are getting some money each month. Then how do I spend the money? What is that budgeting? That's what I'm trying to explain here, right? So let's see. So 50% of that money needs to go into needs. Remember, needs is the basic to survive. 30% I'm going to spend on the entertainment. I want to have fun, right? So 30%. And 20% I'm going to set aside for savings, for emergency, for investments, right? So just remember this 50, 30, 20. So let's take an example. So you have, say, $5,000 coming after taxes in your hand. $2,500 is going to pay for rent, groceries, transportation, insurance, and so on. And if you cannot... Of 4 in 2,500, you may have to have a roommate. You're a single guy at 22. And 5,000 is your starting pay. But as you grow, it's going to increase, right? So wants are 1,500. You're going to spend 1,500. Now, this is unusual in Indian families. But this is this 50, 30, 20 is a perfect formula if you want to, um, you know, enjoy the, the balanced way, right? So you're going to set aside a big amount for for your current fund, and then you're gonna spend 20, you're gonna save 20%, which is $1,000 for your savings, right? So 50, 30, 20, that's the budgeting rule, right? If you follow this, you are gonna make sure you're not gonna go beyond it. You have to be consistent with it. And um, if you, yeah, and it's okay to my, to tweak some proportions. So, for example, your rent in Austin is expensive. Then it could be 60%. So it could be 60, 20, 20. But 50, 30, 20 is very ideal. Right? That's a benchmark. All right. So, with that said, what, how do, what does it cater to? Right. So, needs, 50% needs, the money you set aside for the needs is going to furnish today's basic needs. 30% is today's fun. And the stuff you are saving is for good future. This is your retirement money. This is when you are not going to work. This thing is going to kick in and help you. Okay. So, and so the goal is, I want to live happy life, fun-filled life, peaceful throughout my core years as well as retirement throughout. That's the goal. And this budget helps both the sides while you are working as well as retirement. So this formula is perfect. If you put too much money in the wants and the needs, you won't have enough in the savings, then your retirement could be messed up. So this is a perfect balance. All right. Now, this lesson three is the gratification. So what is gratification? Pleasure, especially gain from satisfaction of a desire. I want this, I want Tesla, or I want big screen TV, that kind of stuff. So instant gratification is, you know, you're walking in a shopping mall and suddenly you get an urge to buy something. And so that that's that instant, you know, or you, are, you have to study for an exam or paper and suddenly your friends call and, oh, we're gonna go out. Um, to a restaurant, something, you're 
And so you, you had that instant urge to do something else, right? So that's instant gratification. Delayed is a resistance to that temptation, that instant pleasure, that instant impulse you have. You're going to resist. You're going to say, oh, I'm going to wait. I'll finish work on this paper, get the exam done, and then later on I'll go. All right. Or I'll say, I'm not going to buy an expensive Tesla car at 22. I'm going to right now save for my retirement and for my for my first house, a starter home, and also save for my retirement. And then later on, uh, maybe after 10 years, I'll buy a, a decent car. Again, fitting the budget. All right. So delayed gratification is simply teaching you to go for the long-term satisfaction. And that skill is required for your incremental and long-term growth. The long-term growth, you're talking about 40, 50 years of habit, right? So you have to develop a habit of delayed gratification. The right side is recommended. Don't keep on buying things you, because you just got impulses. And I'm not saying lives, uh, you know, in a thrifty way, because remember, 30% is our wants. 30% is our fun. So you do have that option to spend money and have fun. It's not like you're not having a single penny to enjoy, right? But you can't have Tesla and a big house, right? And so many toys at, at a young age because your income is not there, right? So financial freedom is when you have no debt, when you have enough money saved and you feel good inside. That financial freedom is our goal. And it's mostly the test of delayed gratification. So that means if you develop this habit, very likely you're gonna have financial freedom. You're gonna you're gonna be rich. You're gonna be happy, peaceful, right? So delayed gratification is recommended. <laughs> Living within the means. This is very very important. So what does it mean? Living within the means. Living within the means means you have enough money to cover your needs, wants, and savings. Whatever money you get you are spending for needs, wants, and savings, nothing beyond that. So how do I execute that? Well, you just follow 50, 30, 20. You buy a house, or sorry, you buy a rent, you rent a house or you rent an apartment that fits in the green um, uh, section here, the needs. You know, you if you want a streaming service, if you want Netflix or HBO, then make sure it fits in this wants uh, section but you gotta make sure you save 20% no matter what, right? So you follow the 50, 30, 20. Living beyond means is I'm getting so much money, but I'm spending so much beyond it. I get $5,000 a month and I ended up spending 7,000. So $2,000 is extra and I probably charged it on credit card. So live within means means live within $5,000. Don't exceed that. And if you keep on exceeding, then your debt will increase, right? So I have a section on debt. So living within the means, when you live within this pie chart, you are also making sure that you are saving for the future and for the emergencies and for your other financial goals. You may have vacation plans, you may have you know world tour plan for your retirement. Or it could be even in wants. You want to go when you're 45 years old, you want to go see Paris. That's in the wants. But this formula you have to execute, right? And beyond the means, that means that $7,000 example is it needs credit cards, loans, line of credit. Now you are borrowing for someone else. And that $2,000 is actually costing you $3,000 because you're paying the interest. You're paying the fees. Somebody is giving you money for a profit, right? So instant gratification also contributes to the living beyond the means. You keep on buying things, your impulses, there's no control, right? That's exactly opposite of living within the means. So you have to have delayed gratification. You have to remember this formula, 50, 30, 20. All right, so let's summarize. So that this uh, four or five lessons were on spending habits, spending Right. So just simply follow 50, 30, 20. Minor proportion changes are okay as long as you consistently follow it. Right. Delay your impulses. 
right? Delayed gratification. If you cannot afford, don't buy. Don't borrow money to buy now, right? But buy when you can afford it. And uh, definitely live a lifestyle within your means. You get 5,000, then you live like a 5,000 earning person. Don't act like a rich guy with less money. That is creation of debt. All right, so this is spending summary. So any questions so far? You can unmute and ask. Anyway, anyway this is a really good, very good information. And, uh, and in fact, I, I, rather than kids, I, in fact, I learn a lot because being a professional, many times we focus on a career and growth in, in, a, in a job, but yeah. we lose our focus in, in, in terms of how to manage the money. Yeah. Because most of us are not from a commerce background as well. That could be another excuse, I can say. Yeah. But this is, this is really good information. Thank you. Awesome. Whenever you ask a question, my friendly request is mention your name also. All right. Because I cannot see. I I hit that. Oh, sure. Bar. Sure. Yeah. This is Mukesh Jala. Oh, Mukesh Bhai. Okay. Good. All right. Now, this is very important. This is a Warren Buffet. You know, Warren Buffet is a popular investor. He's a billionaire. And he's... He's a typical investor. So, you know, Elon Musk is also a billionaire. Ad Adani is also a billionaire. But this guy is a financial investment billionaire. He made more money by investment philosophies. And he's less rich than those two guys, but he's very popular. So he has a formula, right? So he says, no matter how much money you make, 1,000 per month, 5,000 per month, or 10,000 per day, there are only three requirements to be to stay wealthy or to become wealthy. One is make money. Right? You got to have decent income. So make sure you get good education that fetches you good income. That's very important. Your decision to pick a line, a major, when you do that, make sure it is giving you enough income. That's very important. Second thing is use your money to make more money. And I'll explain you this. And third is live below means. These are only three things. Make decent money, use your money to make more money, and stay within that 50, 30, 20 budget. That's the secret, right? So let me translate this. First, get a high-paying job or decent-paying job. Invest money consistently. And then live within your budget role. All right, so this is a formula that many of us have been doing for decades. How can we use our money to make more money? The number two bullet is what we're going to discuss now. And that bullet actually makes you rich. All right? So understanding compounding, this is where compounding comes in. So compound interest is when you earn interest on both the money you have saved and the interest you earn, and I'll give you, explain you through an example. So let's say uh, there is a bank that gives a compounding interest, an interest rate of 5%, okay? 5% is pretty high, but that, let's say, let's take that example. So you started with $1,000. Initially, you put $1,000 in that account. The next year, you get 5% interest, return, profit. So your total now is 1050. Then the following year, second year, end of the second year, it's 110250, 1100 dollars. Because your 5% interest is on now on 1050, not 1000, 1050, 5% on 1050. And then third year, it's 5% on 1102. So 1157. Right. So basically, remember that second bullet, use your money to make more money is simply you put $1,000 over three years at 5% and you gain $157. You use ten, you use $1,000 to gain $157, right? That's the second bullet. Now let's say instead of 5%, you are pretty smart and you got 9% somewhere. Then you got $295 gain, same amount, but you use your money smartly to make more, much more money, almost double, right? And then let's say 12%, you have $400 profit, 404, right? So I'm using my money to make more money, 
right? That's the bullet number two of Warren Buffett. This gain of money is through compounding miracle, through compounding, right? Now, in here in this example, I use three years, right? So compounding grows money. Compounding is like a fertilizer. You, you, you give water and fertilize it to a small plant and it becomes a tree. That's what we are doing. But you have to start somewhere with a small plant, right? So what if we invest over five years or 10 years, right? So this is over three years. What if we do the same thing over five or 10? So now I've done all the calculations and I'm showing you here. So at 5% three year, 157 is your profit. If you had extended two more years, it would be 276. And if you did for 10 years, it'd be 628, right? So thousand dollar invested before 10 years are now 1628. So you got $600, $628 profit. Use your money to make money, right? So profit increased as you increase the time period, number of years. You bumped up number of years. You can also bump up this guy. You are smart to invest. Instead of bank one, now some bank is giving you 7% and you decided to keep for 10 years, then that number will be bigger than this, right? So I'll uh, so that example I gave, bank number two, I'll quickly show you in Excel. And if I can switch to Excel. Here, all right. So let's say you have say $2,000 and uh, let's say 7%. And I'm gonna keep for 20 years, 20 years. This is one-time investment. So in 2023, in January this month, I put $2,000 somewhere where I got 7% profit each year for next 20 years. So in 2043, I'm going to withdraw. That $2,000 became 7,000. So I have a profit of 5,739. Right? Now, instead of 2,000, if I say, daddy says, beta, you got good grades, I'm going to put 10,000 for you then you have 38,000 gain, 28,000. This is one, this is two cars, two used cars. And all you did is you put it in a in that place where you get 7% and forget it for 20 years. You did not work extra. You did not work in a factory or, or uh, did an internship, nothing. You just kept it and let it grow itself. Compounding grows, right? So you used money to make money, all right? That's the example. Now, and the money grows if you keep it over a longer period of time. <clears throat> so let's do a scenario. So let's say for 50, 30, 20 budgeting rule, RO decides to save 20% of his income, right? That's the rule. I'm going to save 20%. Go ahead, Prajwal. Um, I was wondering on whether you um recommend investing in like a four oh like uh with your um yeah, employer I'll I'll with like there. a four hundred one k or if you uh, recommend something like a whole life insurance plan. I'll explain. I'll I'll get there. I have okay. a slide on that. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Good question. So Aro decides to invest twenty percent for our budgeting rule, he has this much money set, set aside to invest. And so he earns 5,000 and he'll invest 1,000 each month. The account on an average gets 9% profit. So the question is how much money will he have after five years? So I would use that Excel, come up with the number, which I already did. And, but in this case, I'm putting 5,000 each month. It's not one time, every month, sorry, 1,000 every month. I'm investing 1,000 every month. So for five years, I put total $60,000 and my compound interest was 15,424. So that's Arav's profit. Arav used $60,000 to make 15,000 profit, right? He used money to make more money, right? So the Excel with the compounding formulas, all that, I have that Excel. I'll, I'll pass it on to you. You don't need to worry on the formulas. Don't focus on the computation part. It's a standard Excel uh, compounding formulas. It's not a rocket science. Anyone can do it. All right. 
But the, what I'm trying to say here is invest 20% at a young age, every month. All right, so let's take another example. There are three guys here, and this is a guessing game, okay? So kids can jump in. So Ravi is doing 1,000 a month at 9% interest. Starting at a very young age, right after college, at 22, he started putting 1,000 every month until he was 50. So he did for 28 years. Kushi, she said, I'm going to spend, I'm going to add more. But she was a little bit late. So she started 30 for 20, and she did for 20 years. She's contributing more than Ravi. So. And then Sri is saying, I'm going to double. I'm going to put double than what Ravi is doing. And I'm going to be smart. I'm going to look around, make sure I invest where I get more money, 10% return. But he realized at a late age, so he started at 40 years, and he did for 10 years. All of them are stopping at 50 years, right? So the question is, who's going to have more money? Who will have highest end balance at the 50th age? Who's going to have more money? Now, I know you don't have the Excel to calculate and all that. So this is a rhetoric question, but there's a guidance behind it. So Ravi will have $1.5 million, $1.5 million, because he did for 28 years, $1,000 each month. Kushi has $801,000. She did put more, but she started late. And then Sri has $409,000. Yeah, he did put double, but he was way late. Yes, he got more return, but Ravi won. So Ravi paid less, put less each month, got a smaller return compared to Sri, yep. but he did over 28 years and he's the winner. Yep. Right? So the message here is, for you all is, you got to start at early age. So first you invest a decent amount, which is, now that decent amount is 20%. Remember? So if you make 7,000, then your decent amount is 20% of 7,000 is 1,400. So you may put 1,400 instead of 1,000. Right? So it's a 20% rule. And make sure, so Sri was pretty smart in getting 10%. So why can't we be smart and make this 9 into 10? Or if it was 5, make it 7. Oh, yeah. Right? And then continue for many years. See, 10 years, 20 years, 20 years. So a good amount, good return, and good number of years. Go ahead, Aryan. Um, I wanted to ask, so it doesn't matter uh, about the interest rate or how much you put in. It matters about when you start. Is that what you mean? When you start is most important factor. The age is most important factor. If you ask your parents, they're nodding their heads right now. When you start is most important. What Your decision of this is coming from that 50, 30, 20, right? So you don't have decision here. You know it's 20%. Mm -hmm. But your control is here and here return percentage and age. I'm telling you, I'm telling you the secret answer, 22 is your right age. In fact, if you're earning Ra right now, and if you can work, you can do now also at 16, at 17, right? That's your decision. That is a, you can invest uh, uh, through a custodial IRA. And we can talk offline on that. But sooner you do is better. The amount, this is 20%, so you don't need to worry about it, but you got to put 20%. Now, someone is having 20% and they may put 10%, then the guidance is, no, max it out. Man, put 20%, right? So once you do this too, this 9% is your research, your due diligence, that's what this thing, you know? 9% is a big number, by the way. It could be 5%. It could be 7%, it could be 12%. 9% is what S&P 500 market benchmark is, all right? 
So you yeah. need to maximize this guy, 9%. Good question. Um, just another thing. Um, do I have to keep the interest rate the same amount? Like, or can I increase it over the years? It will increase. It will go up and down. So right now, if you ask your dad, he'll say the market is down. So right now it is actually negative. But uh, last year. But it will be super high, hopefully this year or next year. So the average, this is more like an average number over 28 years. On an average, he made 9% gains. Okay, thank you. Yeah. But you cannot predict the future, but you invest in such a way that your average comes out. This You cannot predict future, but you do research. All right? So good question. Very good question. Mr. Patak. Yes. Would you suggest getting like a financial um investors or would you just suggest guess getting like an index fund and just like waiting? Index fund is good. You don't need an advisor. If you are really not good in investing, if you don't have time, and if you're okay to give some commission to that person, then go with that. The biggest thing is start early, put a decent amount, and your investment advisor will try to get you a decent percentage. All right. Okay. So it's not required, but index funds is 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 the recommended way. I'll come to that slide. Okay. That's a, that's a lot of dollars. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Can anyone tell me who's this guy? Einstein, right? So what did Einstein say? Compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. If he um, he, who, he who understands it earns it. He who doesn't pays it. So you, I'm te we are teaching you compound interest at this age. It's excellent, right? Now you know it. Now you know you need to do early, right? Uh, many of us learned at a later age. So you have an advantage. The knowledge is useless if you don't implement it. So you have to remember it and do it. All right, so now that 401 can all those questions. So where does that 20% go? Right? So that 20%, which is $1,000 in this example, goes into small buckets. One is for retirement. If you guys are not talking, please mute. One is retirement. And let's say out of $1,000, I'm putting 700 in retirement. Okay? So retirement is for the retirement years. You don't want to work in Walmart as a greeter, right? So I'm saving there. I'm investing in a retirement plan. Those plans are called 401k plan, Roth IRA. And I'm not going to explain this. You are too young to know this, but you need to know that there is a retirement option government gives you that I need to do, right? Mr. Patak. Yes. Don't most I, uh, Roth, no, no, 401k plans only give you like benefits if you like work at a company for like uh, X amount of years. So like if I had a 401k plan at uh, Bob's Bakers, mm -hmm. I'd only get, um, I'd only get some, some of the benefits if I worked with him for 15 years. So Box, Bob's Baker is an example. It's a small uh, store. That, that benefit rule is that, that you work five years, 10 years, and I'll give you insurance. I'll give you 401k. But when you graduate from a college and you get a decent professional job, the employer will give you from very likely from the very first year, very likely. So don't worry. In a decent job, in a temporary job, part-time job, hourly job, they'll have all these rules that you have to stay for this many years. There is a way you can still save since you are living with your parents and not having big expenses. Whatever you earn, can be put, can be invested into custodial IRA for kids. Whatever you earn, if you earn, say, $2,000 by mowing loans uh, and doing um, extra work in a year, that, that $2,000 can be invested. It's called custodial IRA, and your parents can connect with me offline. I'll, I'll guide them. Okay? But good question. It, uh, you may not have a retirement option, but there are other options to save also. This is this guidance is think this way that you graduated from college and you are now you don't know what to do. 
So I told you do 50, 30, 20. Then, you know, okay, uh, uncle, I got $1,000 ready saved. Where do I do? So I'm giving you an example. Put it in retirement. Put it in health savings account, HSA, which is, so what happens is as you get older, your insurance is so expensive. You go to an hospital and the hospital will say, you owe me $1,000, extra $1,000. So where do you get that money from? So, well, you're trying to save money for your health. Is health you're saving for the health purpose only. So I'm putting $150 every month towards health saving. And then when you have kids, they will need for their education. So you will put $150. Now, this is when you have kids. You cannot do it before the kids. All right. And then most important, this is very important, is emergency funds. Meaning, now let's say you are 26 years old, you fell down and you couldn't work uh, for many months. You're getting some, some basic um, uh, money coming from an employer, disability, and that's not enough. And you have a lot of medical expenses, this, that. Then this emergency funds is that extra money you have you can use from that to pay the rent of the house or apartment right? or mortgage or car payment. So this is that emergency funds. You don't use this for, this is money set aside and untouched. If there's an emergency, you lost a job for three months, you did not get a job, then you use from this. So where is the funding for this? This is usually your, when you start working first job, first year you maybe save $10,000, next year another 10,000. And you fill it up within two, three years, this much money while continuing this, while continuing the top three buckets. These are very important. But you gotta have emergency, you know, you gotta have emergency funds. Most of the people in America don't have emergency funds. That's why living, they are living paycheck to paycheck. And that's why they are living beyond means. Go ahead. Someone had a question. Yeah. Would um getting benefits from a 401k be taxed as um income? Because they're technically gaining benefits and stuff. That is when you retire. There will be a tax, a tax deferred. So government doesn't take tax right now. This $700 is pre-tax. Government doesn't take that. Government says, when you retire, you give me money at that time. I don't, I will we'll grow the money. It will compound the money every month you're putting. But when, when you distribute, when you take it for your use, when you're 60 years old, you decide, I don't want to work anymore. I'm going to withdraw the money. That's when they'll tax. Okay. But good so question. like if I invested like. Advanced question for this session, but go ahead. So um, if I had like a hundred dollars and then uh, um, when I was 60, it was $10,000. Then the yeah. government would say, okay, we want uh, you, Projwal, to pay 10% of that. Perfect. So yep. Okay. Government will but, say you gained uh, $90,000, whatever, what was that? 9000 90000 whatever the gains are, profit. Government will say you have to give me tax on your gains, on your profit, <laughs> at the tax rate of when you retire. So at 60 years, if your tax rate was 20%, the government will say, you have to give me 20%. All right? Then, then it's all your money after that. And I'll talk about taxes. All right? So anyway... Um, Imish, this, this is Pramod. Yes. Uh, uh, in the health saving accounts, the investment can be done only if you're enrolled in a HSA health plan, right? HDPP, yeah. It has to be in a high deductible plan yeah if you don't have what are the other options other option is you save it you invest in a brokerage it's better than nothing right health saving it has a triple tax advantage that means it's pre-tax it's not taxed while it's growing and it's not taxed while it's distributed as long as you use it for medical purpose but if you don't have hsa in your employer then I would still set aside and grow it in a brokerage. I'll probably put it in S&P 500 index fund. Better than not, the requirement for that is your, your insurance has to be high deductible plan, SDPP. Then only you're eligible for HSA. Okay. 
So this, what will happen, guys, you are asking valid questions, but this will confuse the new guys. All right. So let's table these questions at the end. I will answer all the questions. Prajwal, you had a question. Go ahead. You can ask me. From my understanding, aren't, um, aren't uh, stocks not considered income? So if I invested in Bob's Bakers and then um, he made $100, so I make $10. Uh, so I have $10 worth of stocks. Would the government tax that? Any profit, government will tax. Any gains, government will tax. The no, but I mean, like, if I have, like, a stock that's worth $10, if I buy that, will the government tax me for it? If you buy a $10 stock, and if $10 stocks becomes $50, $40 is your gain, right? Yeah, but it's, doesn't the, so the tax only applies when I actually sell the stock? Yes. So I could, like, yes. hold on to the stock for, like, 100 years and... If it's, uh, and I only have to pay the tax when I get rid of it, when I sell it? Yes. When you sell the stock, that's when a profit happened or loss happened. If profit happened, called capital gains tax, it could be anywhere from 0% to 20% tax. It's 0, 15, and 20. There are three slabs. Okay, Based but on are, tax rate. Aren't, aren't there different like um, brackets for taxing? Yes. So, like, if I make $10,000 a year, I go in one bracket. If I make, like, $200,000 a year, I yes. go into a different bracket. Yes. So, if I were just, like, supposedly put all the money I have into um, stocks, then uh, would it, would I, um, would my bracket change? Or what if my bracket. employer said, okay, um, instead of paying you $10, I'll uh, give you one stock of Bob's Baker's. Would that mean profit, I wouldn't have to pay income tax? You have to pay income tax on gains. You have to pay income tax on gains for the, for the, now if you are investing in Roth IRA and Roth mm -hmm. 401k, you don't have to pay taxes. That, this is completely different. This will confuse other kids. So let's pause on this. Maybe you can call me, but you have very good questions. But if I had to say simply, simply in a simple language, say at the 60 years of age, you decide to withdraw money, decide to sell stocks. At 60 years, whatever is your tax bracket, if you're earning $200,000 a year, then your tax bracket is high. Then that tax bracket is used on whatever you sell. If you're not earning enough, then the tax bracket is low, right? So remember this, uh, no need to worry on this right now. Just a simple formula is, yes, simple formula is, if you make money, you have to pay taxes in a pre-retirement funds, all right? Let's, let's pause those questions, but those are valid questions. <clears throat> all right, so let's look at big picture, right? So I said those, uh, we got, kind of sidelined. So here, the ten the thousand dollars was broken down into three buckets, 700, 150, 150, right? So just remember that, that we are breaking down into small buckets. I'm saving here, here, and here. And then, so if you see the big picture, that yellow was the savings, we have three sections here. Again, kids' education, your kids, teenagers' kids, that can be only useful when you have kids. So this plan will start when you have kids. This too depends on your employer, but I'm assuming these are all available. You are say, 30 years old right now. You have one kid. You are in, working in a decent company. This is your lifespan. And this is what we are doing. So every month, so starting 22, I'm doing this, 50, 30, 20, 50, 30. Every month till, say in this example, I'm doing till 60. Every month I'm doing. So that yellow portion is the saving. And that yellow portion accumulates and helps you with the retirement. So this yellow is going to feed from 60 to 100, however long you live. This yellow is benefited by the compounding. Every month you have saving, 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 saving continuously, right? So 
uh, that per person, that, that example I gave where we are comparing the three guys, the first person, Ravi, right? I think it was Ravi. He was doing for 28 years, right? So that's, that's this. All right. And that guy, he was done at 50, but I'm, let's say he continued 10 more years, right? So he had 1.5 million. So now he has 2 million because he's, or 3 million because he continued for three more, or 10 more years. So that 3 million at 60 is used to live this life. He doesn't have to work anymore. All right. He doesn't have to work anymore because he has enough money saved and he's only withdrawing some portion every month to live, go do vacation, this, that. So see, I'm, what I'm showing here is the power of this 20 person. Where does it play a role here? All right. Then there's a thing called passive action, uh, income. So you are working eight to five uh, as a finance guy or, or a doctor or an engineer or a computer IT guy in a company. Let's say you're working in Amazon from eight to five and you want to do some side income, right? So that's what passive income is. It's extra money that you'll gain and you're not quitting your day job, but you're doing something side. Maybe you invested in a property and you're getting a rental income or you're selling something online or investing in stocks, funds, bonds, maybe creating a podcast and doing a subscription service or a YouTube channel, right? So these are things that you're doing on the side apart from the day job and earning some money, right? So what I'm trying to do here is explain you the concept of passive income, right? I'm not telling you go do a second job. That's not what I'm telling you. I'm telling you passive income is also very popular and it's a financial security. If you lost a day job and if you earned enough and saved, this money will be helpful. Other thing is if you have so much money coming from for say a YouTube channel, then, then you have higher chances of retiring early or, or doing something that you always liked, right? Maybe doing more vacations or, you know, so some people, they use passive income to pursue their hobbies. So someone likes, someone has a passion of making some woodwork project furniture and he does it on the side. He is working in Amazon as an IT guy, but he has a passion with woodworking. So he's doing that. So he's doing his hobby and making money out of it, right? It's like uh, the last thing is the reduced stress because you have two incomes, a day job from Amazon and passive income. You have some, uh, you know, assurance that you are having second income, right? So people do passive income. Some people run, drive Uber. Have you seen those guys? They work full-time somewhere. In the evening, they're doing Uber, right? So this is to explain you the concept of passive income. You don't have to do it. I have not done passive income, but I have done investing in stocks, funds, and bonds, right? So I'm getting dividends, I'm getting gains, and all that stuff, right? Best way I would suggest is if you have a passion to do something, do it in your younger age as a side gig. All right, debt management. This is very important. So what is debt? So debt is you borrow money from someone to buy that big screen TV. And because you didn't have money, so you had to borrow. And a $2,000 TV, you had to pay some interest, right? So you incurred a debt. And now you're paying back with an interest. That's debt. So what is usually the, ideally we should not have any debt, but there is some good debt, bad debt, right? So I'll explain you that. But the biggest problem with the bad debt is things that you should not have or debt that you should not have. The root causes are you keep on buying things, you have instant gratification. You drink Starbucks coffee every day, a $5 coffee every day and you keep on swiping your credit cards. Or you bought the, the fancy Apple Watch and the new one comes out, you bought, you bought that next year. You keep on upgrading your iPhone. You kept on living beyond your means. That means you kept on spending money that you didn't have, you charged it. And the second thing is, here I told you to save emergency funds. You don't even have emergency funds and something happened you lost your job and you had to pay the rent. So you use your credit card and now you have a debt of $1,400, right? If you had emergency funds, you didn't have, you wouldn't have to use the credit card, right? Or sometimes bad financial decisions. Some friend told you buy these stocks and you did not research and you bought it and the stock went down. 
you did not do your research, right? So, or some, some other bad decisions, you bought a car that you could not afford or the insurance is too high, right? That causes debt, that causes loss, right? And if you don't pay uh, uh, the debt, now you made a mistake, you have a debt of $5,000, but you could not pay it uh, in a timely fashion, it's gonna reduce your credit score. If you have a low credit score, and if you want to buy a house or car, it will be difficult. The guy will say, you don't have a good credit score. I don't trust you. You already have so much debt. Why should I give you a car with a debt? Why should I give you a $20,000 loan for a car? But then he'll say, wait a minute, I can still give you, but your interest rate will be 12% or 15% instead of 4%. So a people with good credit score will get at 4%. But since you already have so much debt, your credit score is down and your paying habit is not good, they'll say, oh, I'll give you for 18%. Right? So it will cost you more. So that is always bad. Now, if, what, if you ask your parents, what they're doing is they're doing it on a specific credit card and paying it off fully every month. And they get points and they get profit. They'll get $100, $50. They're only doing that for points. So if I have an expense of three and three thousand dollars, I pay it off right away within a month, thirty days. But I'm not going to go beyond my means. I'm not going to charge so much on a credit card, and I don't have enough income. So I'll do it only for my budget, right? And if you have so much debt, if you have car debt, credit card debt, you bought so you went on a vacation and you spent like anything. Now you have $10,000 on debt. You have to pay that off. You cannot quit your job and say, I'm done. I want to retire. No, you owe someone money. You don't have financial freedom yet. So you have to work till you pay the debt. And that can af affect you emotionally, mentally, and physically. It will scare you. It will tire you. You lose a job and you have a debt, you will be worried all night. So debt is bad. That's what I'm trying to say. Do not do that. But there is a good debt, which we cannot avoid, which is the education loan. Education loan because you are want to try to become a doctor or an engineer or an IT guy, computer science guy, a cybersecurity guy. You know, that loan is going to pay your education and then it hopefully will give you a good job, paying job, and you can pay off. But education loan should not be so huge that you end up paying for 20 years, right? So you will do a good job with your kids. You will make sure you use that 529 plan and try your best to not have a loan, all right? Mortgage, how home mortgage, the home payments, the whole house loan payments is a good debt because eventually you're gonna pay off the house and the house is gonna increase the value. So there's an appreciation of the house. So this is a acceptable debt. The bad debt is car. Car always loses a value. If you buy a $20,000 car, as soon as you get out of the dealership, the car becomes an $18,000 car. And over a period of time, it will lose the value. So, so what the lender or the guy who gives you loan is making money and your car is losing value. Same thing with the clothes, designer clothes. You want those Adidas shoes? Yeah, you can do it if it fits within your wants. That 30%, 50, 30, 20, 30%. But don't borrow it on a credit card and pay over 10 years or five years or three years. Uh, the shoes are going to get old and it's going to lose the value and you're not going to sell anyways. So try to avoid bad debt. Now car, I'll say if you got a low interest rate, Smaller loan, smaller interest loan. If you get a five-year loan, pay it off in three years. Pay it off as much as you can. Debt-free state is the best way. If you don't have debt, then you can save that 20% for future, for the savings, and 30% for fun. If you have debt, you may not be able to do fun. You may not be able to go to movies. All right, so stay within the means. 50, 30, 20. Taxes. So there were some questions on taxes. But at a high level, 
residents, uh, you, me, your parents, some business owners, a baker shop or a factory, right? Uh, Tesla factory. They earn money and they have to contribute to the government. They pay taxes. Not everything, some percentage, some money. Who gets it? Federal government, so it's a central government, state government, Texas state, and city like Austin. And then the governments use it for the roads, parks, hospitals, schools, welfare, defense, army, planes, etc. Right? So that's why they are we are paying taxes. You know? So these are the types of the taxes. You get an income. You get $7,000, government takes away taxes. You get $6,400 or whatever that after-tax money you get as a payroll tax, property tax. Your parents are paying huge property tax. You must have heard them complaining about it at home. Hmm. Austin property taxes, corporate taxes. Amazon is probably paying a corporate tax. Capital gains taxes, when you sell the stocks, you make $5,000 profit. Then you have to pay maybe 20%, 15% tax back to the government. And sales tax, every time you buy something in a store, uh, say you bought a you know, $30 t-shirt, there's I think 8% sales tax in Austin. So 8% of $30 is $2.40 goes to the government. Right? Now, if you buy a food, I, think, I don't think there's a tax on the food, fruits and vegetables. Certain items, do not have tax, but sales tax is mostly everywhere. If you go to a restaurant, you are paying tax, All right? So what is our goal? We know that we have to pay taxes. Our goal is the word, uh, the phrase tax efficiency. Then what is tax efficiency? When an individual or business pays the least amount of taxes required by the law. So I'm not saying don't pay taxes. I'm not saying don't evade taxes. That's a crime. The question, the point is, do not overpay the taxes. If you make $100, you pay $20 tax, but don't pay $30 tax. Be smart to pay the lowest minimum tax within the law. Within the law. So you should be smart to pay only $20 on $100 gains instead of $30, right? We're not going to break any tax laws. We need to be tax efficient. <laughs> So your skill, when you grow, when you go to college and all that, you now start saving money in, in that 20% saving, 401k, this, that, brokerage account. You have to be smart also on the tax side, tax efficiency side. Certain things will end up pushing you to pay more taxes. So you, some financial decisions you may screw up. You may say, oh, I'm going to sell this now, and you will end up paying more taxes. For example, to give an example, Let's say you have 10 stocks of Amazon and you just bought it in January and you sold it in October. You made some profit. So you sold it with, within 12 months. So that what government says is that's a short term. So there's a short term capital gains tax. That means you, the rule is you have to keep it more than a year. If you keep it more than a year, government is saying, I'm going to tax you less a small amount. But if you sold it within one year, I'm going to charge you a lot. So that's a decision. You made a mistake by selling in October. You should have waited two more months. But who knows? That could be another reason. You needed money or you were impatient or you were panicked. Right? So the tax depends on your decisions and your research and your knowledge. All right. So the lessons are done. Now see, let's see the overall picture, right? Now you, many of you are probably confused, this, that. So what is overall? So, and I have simplified it. When you start earning, follow 50, 30, 20. And my goal is, I want you to enjoy now as well as in future, all right? So what do you do right after college? You're 22 years old. You put 20% savings. You start using 20%. Go ahead, Raul. Unmute. Sorry, that was a mistake. Yeah. Okay. So right after college, at 22, you graduated, 
make sure you get a good degree, okay? The one that pays. Remember Warren Buffett's first rule was make sure you make money. Second was use money to make money. Right? We got to have money to make money. Right? So you graduated from a college. You decided I'm not making decent money, 20% savings. You start your 401k and IRA. So in this presentation, in this session, you have to just remember that you have to save 20% and you start 401k IRA at your new job. That's it. And then as you as you grow and gain experience, you may have some extra money. You got married and now your wife joined you. She's also doing 20% savings and you still have extra money because you're pretty good in uh, this 50, 30, 20 budget. You're very good and you're living within the means. Then you may have some extra money. Then you can invest also. Where you invest, that is your decision. That is your research. That is your due diligence. You have to be very careful. You may lose all the money in stock market. Not stock market is very, can get scary. So you just don't do blindly. Mostly you do in mutual funds. And S&P 500 is America's top 500 companies. The best 500 companies of America is S&P 500. And there's an index mutual fund. You don't need to, let's not discuss the details of it, but just remember right now, that I'm going to invest in top 500 companies mutual fund or ETF. It's exchange traded fund. And when you reach at that age, you will know exactly what it is, right? So then every month you contribute to 401k and IRA, that, that yellow bar. Okay. And then once you learn about investments, make sure you diversify your investments based on your risk profile. Diversify means don't put everything in one area. Spread it out. So one investment, like the housing market is down right now. Stock is also down. But there could be cases where housing is down and stocks are up. So you diversify. You put some money. You buy properties. You put in stock market. You put in bonds and so on. So you diversify. And do all these things. So you started after college. Continue till at least five years. Automate your investments. That 20% that's going, that's automated. It means you don't even feel it. Every month you get a paycheck, you don't even feel it. It just goes directly, gets deposited, gets invested, and you're done. And you'll get used to it. It will become a habit. Right? You don't, you don't, you don't, every morning, you don't remember, oh, I need to brush. You don't say that way. It's part of your lifestyle. Okay? You don't forget shower. It's part of your lifestyle. You don't forget eating. Right, same way, you don't forget savings if you make it a habit, right? And I'm not saying save, save, save. I'm saying enjoy life too. That 30%, this is where your, your you know, movies, entertainment, your designer clothes, if it fits in 30%, if you do these two things, savings and needs, no one will ask you what is in 30%. You can have Starbucks. You can have vacations. You can buy a, a golf kit. You can buy a car if you can if your payment fits in this box in this sector section, right? So uh, we want you to enjoy too, definitely. Restaurant meals, if it fits, your lunch uh, at work, a Thai restaurant, Chinese, if it fits this budget, right? That five thousand dollar example, so this is fifteen hundred. If your fund should fit in fifteen hundred dollars, we want you to have one. All right. So what is that? The today's basics, today's fun, and this is for future. When I'm 60, I'm going to go around the world. I'm going to do cruises. I'm going to travel. I'm going to have a you know, cleaning lady come every week, maybe a cooking lady. I'm going to live like a king. That good future really depends on this 20%. All right. Again, the big picture. We do this every month, every month. Your starting point is 22 till 50 or 60. It's up to you. It's up to you. And the yellow bars is your future fund. And if you have enough money at 53, you say, oh my God, I got so much. I'm done. Then you can retire at 53. Then your retirement starts from this point. It's up to you. Sooner you do, you have higher options of starting early retirement. Make sure you have something good lined up when you retire. Otherwise, you'll get bored. 
All right, so let's do this one. This is the final slide. And this is a very good slide. And you should memorize this. This is the two guys, Tej and Jay. So what Tej is doing is, at the age of 25, he started investing in a year, every year, every December, he puts $20,000 till he was 34. So he did for 10 years, every year, 20,000 in December. So he maybe earns say $80,000, 20,000 he puts every year. And then Jay said, I'm gonna do the same thing starting 35, but I'm gonna do over 40 years. Sorry, 30 years, 35 to 65. I'm going to do from 35 to 65. So Jay is here doing every year 20,000. Tej is doing from 25 to 35 every year. And they both retired 65. Guess who wins? Tej has more money, 2.1 million. And Jay has 1.8. Even though Jay put more money in 30 years, he's still losing. Why? Because... Jai started early. They both, Tej and he, started. sorry, Tej started early. Tej started early and was smart. And at 35, he said, I'm done. I'm not, I'm, I'm going to use $20,000 to have vacations. I did start early and I did put in the right funds. And the assumption is both these guys are making 7% every month, every year. All right, so this is a race that Tej won because he started early. So early, start investing in good mutual funds from a very young age, right after college for many years and follow 50, 30, 20 budget rule. That's it. You can take a screenshot, put it on a mirror, put it on your phone, and every morning say this sentence five times and implement it. And you'll be much, much richer than your parents. Same thing applies to my son. Okay. So I'm done here and open for questions, comments, discussion. So like, um, right there, a lot of dollars. Boy, millions? Wow. 